Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria, back to you with another review for Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 15, called Honey Spooning, right? So we are at day one of marriage for Chloe and Michael, and they're waking up the next morning after their wedding, cuddling, talking in bed. Supposedly, I guess, Chloe gets a panic attack. She had four panic attacks that the previous night because she gets panic attacks when she's super stressed and, you know, getting married and everything going on, being on camera, all that stuff. She don't say all this word for it. I'm just paraphrasing you know, probably led to her panic attacks. And, you know, it's only at night. It's never during the day. So, you know, Michael's being very supportive and saying, you know, at least it's at night time, you know, he has to worry about it versus like having to worry about it during the day and whatnot. They get breakfast and have breakfast in bed and they continue to talk, you know, getting to know each other and whatnot. So nothing much to take from that. So then we move on to back in Austin. We get a little snippet of them in Philly visiting his family and we're going to move right along. Okay, we're back to Chloe and Michael. They're packing up to leave for their honeymoon. They're going to... Where are they? Some type of resort. But it's it's still in Colorado. Um, I feel like even though they missed out on the chance to go out of the country to a honeymoon, I feel like y'all could have done better and had them go at least out of state. Okay, I, you know, I just feel like they was very gypped. Uh, I don't know if it's scheduling issues on both ends of Chloe and Michael... But I'm like, y'all could have y'all could have still even had them go on a weekend getaway out of the country. You know, they do have those type of trips. And if not out of the country, at least out of state, so they could feel like they really went somewhere. But you know, to go somewhere in the same state that was maybe a couple hours away, to me it just felt like, you know, they got gypped a little bit. But whatever, it ain't my money that's being spent on them. So, you know, Married at First Sight said, you know, we only had the funds to send them out of the country once. So since, you know, this is a delayed thing, you know, we still gonna do them, you know, have them have a honeymoon. But they they just going to be, like, down the street a couple hours from their hometown. I mean, I guess, but I just, I, I don't agree, guys. I think y'all could have done better, okay? With the funds y'all had, the money y'all spent, y'all could have spent that money having them have maybe a more extravagant type of honeymoon, okay? I think their honeymoon was only, like, two hours at this point, the way it felt for this episode. But anyway, we have Emily and Brennan. Uh, I guess they're trying to do a communication exercise with a talking stick to work on their communication and Brandon lets Emily know that he does care about her he wants her in his life and you know losing her would suck and I'm just looking at him like are you sure because I don't feel none of that you you saying this you saying all this and Emily looks like she's smirking a little bit but I feel like she knows deep down inside you lying just like I feel like you lying because you saying all of this but it seems like your actions on and off camera is showing a completely different thing from what you saying Brandon so you can say all you want you care for her and stuff like you told your friend and stuff the other week we don't we we're not hearing it we hearing it but we're not hearing it well we're hearing it but we're not seeing it okay so you can say whatever you want but it's going through one ear out the other Emily said she's afraid of losing herself in the process by putting up with him and taking the disrespect. She don't say disrespect. You know, she said him mistreating her and whatnot um, because she's being treated in a way that she doesn't deserve. And I'm like, Emily, I am just, look, I'm just so glad you are realizing this before it's too late because you still got a chance to up and, <laughs> get up and out of here with with, with 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 that little situation with Brendan. So I'm just so happy that she's, she's starting to see it for what it is. And not being delusional, like what she was talking about last week, talking about, oh, he said there's no chemistry, but, you know, I see the chemistry or something like that. And I'm just like, uh-huh. You, you see a chemistry or you just want there to be a chemistry to the, to the point where you're having this false reality that there's chemistry when there's really, like, not no chemistry. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I guess Emily tries to explain that she doesn't, he doesn't trust her like a friend even because he was went into this whole spiel about being friends again and whatever, working as friends and whatnot. So she then makes a comment that, you know, he doesn't even trust her as a friend. Brennan, while she's trying to explain that, he stops her in the middle of her talking and asks if she's sure she wants to go down that route. And it's just like, bro, you, you really, you really, you know, like trying to control every conversation, every narrative that's being said because anything that goes down the hill, like, you're making yourself look worse than what you probably would have looked like had you just been yourself on camera. Like, I, I don't understand why you feel the need to look so perfect in camera when all of your insecurities and true self is, is bleeding through 
you trying to be perfect. Like we don't see none of that. We don't, we don't see you being perfect. We see you being very imperfect and you trying to fake like you're perfect, but being faking to anything, we're going to see that shit. Like, sorry to curse, sorry for vulgar language people. But at the same time, we are frustrated. Me, America, Emily, other uh, YouTubers, we are all frustrated with homeboy Brennan because at this point, it's like, we all know what it is. You know, we all know what it is. Okay. But he's still trying to make it seem like, oh, it's not what we think it, oh, it's not what we know what it is. You know what I'm saying? So Brennan, please stop the facade at this point. Just act like your true self so we could confirm what we already know. So that way we could really dog you out in these streets. And you need to go to therapy. You may feel like you don't need therapy. You need therapy. You need to go to therapy. You need help professionally. Okay. We can't help you. I can't help. I can't help nobody. Okay. I can't even help myself. But you know who can help you? A professional. That's what you need. But you're in denial that you need help. But it's the ones that be in denial that probably be needing the most help. And you're one of them. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell Emily. Emily knows what to do. But, you know, she's going to try to stick beside you and try to work her best. But for me, I'm just like, I, I don't, I just don't understand. It's like, you don't want to verbalize exactly what it is that you don't like about Emily, even though we know there's something you don't like about Emily because you're not trying to hurt her feelings. But the way you treat her and acting this whole, the way that these weeks been going is like, you're doing her more of a disservice by just not being upfront and personal, excuse me, and transparent versus trying to let us know that there is something, but you're not really trying to say exactly what that is. Damn it. This damn cord thing. Bear with me. Okay. So, uh, whatchamacallit, Emily continues to explain her reasoning uh, for the whole friend situation. And I guess someone told her, it was probably Claire. Okay, I'm, I'm just going, it was probably Claire that told her that they don't even, her and Brandon don't even look like friends. So he's like, oh, someone told you that? She's like, yeah. So he's like, oh, that's very unfortunate. And, you know, not to worry about what others say. And at the end of the day, it just matters that, you know, they're happy. And I'm just like, Brennan, who the hell is happy in your relationship? Because you damn sure ain't happy. Emily damn sure ain't happy. Who's happy here? There, there's nobody happy in your relationship. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know y'all not happy. You know, if you're smart, Brennan, which I feel like you are, okay, you know that you and your wife ain't happy in a relationship. So why are you then trying to come on camera saying, oh, what matters is y'all, you know, y'all being happy. But y'all not, though. So what are you saying here? What are you talking about? I'm very confused. And I'm not going to try to decipher what he's trying to say. Or No, I'm just going to move on because at this point, you know, Brennan's just talking some BS. So we then move on to Chloe and Michael. Uh, they get to their honeymoon resort and, you know, they get to their hotel room and pop some bubbly, you know, talk, you know, little nonsense stuff that I really don't care about. So then we're going to move on to Emily and Claire. They go out and get some tea at night and, you know, they talk about the relationships. What she got to talk about with um homeboy Cameron? We don't know because Cameron been MIA for weeks now. And, you know, he recovering from his uh, procedure for his heart condition. And, you know, Chloe just feels so bad, you know, just wants to be there for him. I mean, not Chloe. I'm sorry. Claire. Okay, Claire. All right. I, I don't know what to tell you at this point. I guess you've been reaching out. But if he's not responding, then leave it alone. He don't want to talk to you. If, you know, if someone is in recovery and stuff, you know, they may not be in the mood to talk to anybody. But, you know, they would be in the mood to talk to who's important to them. Okay. So let, let's just... He is no way, shape, or form, Claire, trying to, you know, talk to you after all the stuff you've been trying to reach out to him. You know, I don't feel like he even be texting you back and nothing. So just leave it alone. You know, he don't want to talk to you. He over it. He over the show. You know, he over the marriage. You know, he, he, he moving on with his life. Okay. Especially that he's in recovery from his procedure. So he going to hang out with his friends that he considers family. And you're not one of them, Claire. I'm so sorry to be so blunt with you, but like, I feel like you, 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 you being a little desperado. Okay. It's not like you want to be back with this man, but it's like you put him in a friend zone. That's like, you consider him like a very close friend, but it's like, he don't consider you a close friend. Claire. Let it go. L let it go. Okay. Let it go. We didn't get to uh, Emily talking about her relationship. We was really talking about her and her relationship this episode. And, you know, Claire said that, you know, Brendan is silencing her. And, you know, Brendan don't. And then uh, Emily was like, you know, Brendan don't like her and whatnot. So Claire was like, F that. I'm like, yes, Claire, you know, you should. 
the way you telling Emily F that, you should be saying that to yourself and your your situation with Cameron. You should be saying F that too. Just like Cameron said F that. I'm just, you know, you know, you gotta take your own advice, you know. But uh Emily says she's not giving up, even though it's very hard and stuff, and I'm just like, all right, all right, Emily. You go you, you still trying. We 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 still trying in this really we, we're oh okay. You know, I don't know what to tell you, Emily. You know, you, you, you've been trying since day one and I just <sighs> I know, I know we're supposed to be fine for marriages and stuff. We're supposed to be, you know, hoping the best. But at, at, if I don't know someone that long and it's like I am putting... so I tell you guys this all the time. I tell you all all the time. I'm not what I'm not going to do. Especially if I've known you less than two months. I can know anything barely about you. And I see you not reciprocating the energy that I'm trying to give to you and stuff. I'm going to fall back to the point where at this point, if I was Emily, I wouldn't even be in a situation no more. Okay? If that $50,000 fine, there better be payment plans that I could pay like $2 a month. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in debt for the rest of my life. But that's fine because I'm not going to subject myself to this type of situation with Brennan when God only knows what's going on behind closed doors, when the mics are not up, when the producer's not in there, when, you know, no camera crew or anything's in there, when they're in a room where there's no camera on the corner of the wall because I don't think there's any cameras that's ever in the actual bedrooms. It's only in the living rooms. So it's like, I, I'm not, I, who knows? I, she's, she's. I'm not going to say physically, but there, there's definitely some verbal abuse. And the way that she seems so scared to talk anything on camera or with people, or she only has smoke for, you know, people when he's not there, like Keisha. Um, like, I, I, I don't got time for that. Both of y'all too grown for this shit. Okay? So, it's just like, the fact that she's still not giving up, I don't know why. What could pop, What is he doing that's keeping you f to keep working this out? Because... I don't feel like he's giving you anything. You know, as they be saying nowadays, you know, I'm not hip, but, you know, I, I, I've been learning some things on social media, you know what I'm saying? I'm not that old, but I'm not that young either. Uh, you know, he, he giving her breadcrumbs. You know, that's a new slang I learned on, on social media. He's giving her breadcrumbs, okay? And she she's eating them breadcrumbs up like it's her last meal. And I don't like that for her. I, I don't like that for Emily. You way better than that, you know, you realize you don't deserve that. So what? When are we gonna get the self worth enough to leave? Like that's what I'm waiting for, Emily. Like for you to leave. We're all waiting for you to leave. No, you know you're gonna, you're gonna keep staying. In. Well, like I said, I told y'all last week he was giving me the ID channel. So Emily, I just hope you you realize before it's too late. That's that's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna move on to uh, day two of Chloe and Michael's marriage in Cannon City, Colorado. I don't know how far that is from Denver. I'm not going to look it up. If someone wants to look it up for me, y'all can let me know. But it's not necessary. We don't care because at the end of the day, it's still in the same state. So Michael and Chloe, they go hiking. And, you know, she's very tiresome. She doesn't, doesn't like the activity at all. You know, she's afraid of heights and whatnot. So she didn't really appreciate it. But, you know, she did appreciate that Michael supported her throughout the whole thing. So after they get to the top, I guess they go on a bridge and talk a little bit. And, you know, ask each other questions. You know, getting to know each other. I'm not, I didn't write none of it down because I'm just like, ain't nothing to write down. You know, in, in moments like this, if there's nothing to write down, then it's like it's a chill mood. It's a chill scene. That's good, you know. That's good. So, no, well, that was it. We then get to 70, 17 days until decision day for the rest of the couples. And Emily and Brandon, they sit with Pastor Cal. Uh, Emily says she wants a husband, not a friendship. And Pastor Cal shares the interview clips from both of them when they was casting for the show in the first place. So, Emily's video goes first. And Brandon says she's exactly the same in person that she was in the video. Then they played Brandon's video. And it looked like he's not really the same person on video than he is in, you know, real life with Emily. So, Pastor Cal asked her um, if that's the same person. So, it seems like in the beginning she was afraid to answer. This is when they go to commercial for dramatic effect. Come back from commercial for dramatic effect. And she's, I mean... I was, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really paying attention exactly word for word what she was saying. But I'm just going to write the gist of what I thought she was saying. If I'm incorrect, please let me know. Because, you know, sometimes with this show, it's like you you be watching it. You you sit in there. You're watching it. But it's like your mind is not registering the BS of what's going on on TV. Okay? This was one of those moments. And I didn't feel like rewinding it because I'm, 
I just be ready for the episode to be done at that point. You know, at a certain point to the point, it's just like, it, it, we, we just going to move on. So from what I took of what she done said, of what registered in my brain, okay? She says, yes, but it's not really being emphasized. I guess he's the same person, but he's not really showcasing what he really feels or what he really wants of like his marriage situation to be happening. Does that make any sense? No, I understand. She didn't make no sense to me. Okay. So Brandon said they're doing their best they can. And you know, they just need to respect each other's boundaries and stuff. I don't know what Pastor Cal done said, but to me, I'm just like, okay, can we go to the next thing? Because Brandon is just going to lie. Emily seems like she's going to want to tell the truth, but she's going to lie on behalf of Brandon because she don't want to get, you know, chewed up once y'all leave. And then Pastor Cal just seems like he knows what's going on, but just trying to act like he's oblivious to what's going on. Okay. So then we move on to Chloe and Michael, because there's nothing else for me to say about uh, Emily and Brandon. I already said too damn much this season thus far. Okay. So Chloe and Michael, they have dinner and they talk. And I guess uh, Michael's mom doesn't really support this whole uh, process. So... He said he wants to take time before he introduces Chloe to his mom. But, you know, no matter how the mom may feel in the beginning, she's going to get over it is what he's trying to say. But at the same time, you know, he needs Chloe to trust him and his timing of not introducing her right away. And I'm just like, if you say the mom going to get over it, you know, eventually and whatever, why not introduce her sooner so then it could take sooner for the mom to get over it and just, you know, let bygones be bygones? Are you just trying to wait to the decision day to see if you guys actually going to even still be together. And then that's when you introduce her to mama. You know, I can understand that reasoning, but at the same time, it's just like, wouldn't you want to rip the bandaid off the, uh, the skin or whatever to get it over with. So that way it could quicken the process of her getting over the situation. No, we don't want to do that. Whatever. That's your life. Uh, that's your decision. Chloe seems like she's a little bothered by it, but she ain't going to say much. So it is what it is. If she agrees to it, then, you know, y'all, that, that's y'all relationship. That got nothing to do with me. We move on then to um, Austin and Becca. You know, they get back from Philly and they sit and talk. Becca is sexually frustrated because, you know, she keeps initiating and, you know, keeps getting rejected. So, you know, that kind of hurts her little ego and, you know, all that stuff, which is understandable. And Austin, you know, wants her to keep being patient and... At this point, it's like, you can't force someone to have sex, but I can understand how they say they want it and all that stuff, but they're not really trying to do nothing just yet. Can make you feel like, dang, like, what's wrong with me to the point they don't want to have sex? But at this point, Becca, you got to stop looking at it as a you thing and look at it as a him thing, because at this point, it's him. It's not you. It's him. So, and if he's really not feeling you like that, he needs to vocalize that instead of making it seem like, you know, that's not the reason. I mean, maybe that's not the reason, but if it's not the reason, what is the reason? So I don't know if y'all having any conversation behind closed doors about that, but it's just like, Becca, are you not doing, okay. Becca, are you not, you don't, you, they give you a dildo for goodness sake. They give you a free dildo. I mean, depending on what type of dildo you're buying, they, they really not that expensive, you know what I'm saying? So are you not pleasuring yourself in the meantime? Like, I understand the real thing is always better. Uh, for the most part, depending on what toy you got, you know. But are, is there anything else you can do in the meantime? Because you can't, like, rate this, man. You know what I'm saying? No trigger warning. Sorry. Even though I already said it before I said trigger warning. But it's like, you can't do that, obviously. So if he's not giving you what you want, he keeps rejecting you, and you don't want to keep being rejected, and it's hurting your feelings and all that stuff, can you do? can you use something in the meantime to hold you over while homeboy over there figures out what he's trying to do? I don't know. Maybe she is, but it's like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do it. Like if you're doing it once a day, you have to do it twice a day, Becca, because homeboy don't want to have sex with you. We don't know why, but he don't want to have sex with you, and you're gonna have to just accept that fact because what else are you gonna do? You can't, like I said, you can't do anything else with him. So just hold yourself over until he's ready. Um, and then if he's never ready, and y'all end up getting divorced, then you could be out in these streets, having whoever the hell you want to. Okay, so. I, like, I get her frustrations, but at the same time, it's just like, okay, Becca, but he don't want to. Like, what are you going to do? Stop trying to initiate. If he if he keeps rejecting you, why you keep initiating? I'm not, I'm definitely not going to keep initiating if you're going to keep rejecting me. After about a couple of times, I'm going to be like, all right, cool. You come to me when you're ready. And in the meantime, 
meantime, I'm going to do what I got to do. Okay? With my purchases. Damn. Becca, relax. Relax. We, you need to buy, like, the Road 3000 or something because... Anyway, uh, we get to day three of marriage for Chloe and Michael. And, you know, they get couples massages at the spa. They talk and flirt and whatever. And then Michael gives Chloe massages and whatever. So, it was cute. You know, I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna hate on it. You know, Michael was making little noises when he was getting massages. And I'm like, look, I I've had massages a couple of times in my day. You know, I'm saying this like I'm like someone. Look, I've had a couple of massages. Professionally, unprofessionally, or Massages is a great thing. Massages are a great thing. You know, deep tissue massage may have me cry a little bit because, you know, my back is very tense. But, you know, the Swedish massages, oh, my gosh. So, I, I understand. I understand. So, listen, I'm not mad at you. Y'all do what y'all do. Y'all couple getting professional massages. Then, you know, he giving you a massage. I don't know if Chloe gave him a massage. But it was, listen, a normal scene. Okay, we move on to Emily. She's going to uh, call her friend, talk about her marriage. The friend says she needs to put her foot down and set her boundaries with him, just like he's setting his boundaries with her. But, you know, personally, in her opinion, she needs to run for the hills. Girl, you... <laughs> this is not the first time Emily done heard it, okay? I understand you trying to tell her, you know, be honest and stuff where everybody done told her to run. You know, everybody told her to leave homeboy, but she going to stick it out, stick beside him. So you could say all you want, friend, but, you know, I know you try to show some, some support uh, for her to set her boundaries, put her foot down, because, you know, she you know she going to stay. But Emily don't need to be there no more. She don't, she don't need to be there no more. And me personally, since the friend talking about her personally, me personally, Brandon, I just don't understand, like, what, what, the, what is the issue here? And I just feel like if you gave her what you wanted to give your wife per your interview video, she would treat you like a king. She already treated you like a king. So so that should already show you how committed she is. Can you imagine if you was actually treating her right, Brendan, how better, how f f more above and beyond she'd probably go for your ass? But no, you want to just be a dick. That You want to be a dick. Emily... Look, I know this is your first relationship, but let this be a lesson to you. Don't be trying to stick it out with somebody who not trying to stick it out with you. Even though they want to stay in the marriage, but like they're not doing the efforts to stick the marriage out to make it work. So hopefully this is a lesson learning for you on your next relationship because you can't tell me they stay together. And if they did, what the hell? So we're going to move on then to Dr. Pia visiting Austin and Becca. So they sit and talk. And I'm looking at Dr. Pia. I'm like, I love these curls on Dr. Pia. This, this, this goes, this is very nice. I love it. So, uh, they still haven't had sex yet. What a shocker there, you know. I, I did thought they did, they, they did something, you know, the other episode. Not last episode, but the episode before. But, you know, I sit corrected because they ain't do shit. And Becca's just frustrated. She's sexually frustrated. And, you know, not only because of that, but because on the trip to Philly, visiting family, they were staying at a, uh, the relative's house and whatnot. And Austin wasn't really that affectionate with her in regards to like the PDA and even behind closed doors because, you know, it's family in the house and he's also dealing with his allergies. He's allergic to cats. There was like two cats in the house. So his lungs wasn't, you know, really good and the sinuses and whatnot. So I guess he just wasn't in the mood, which is like, I can understand. Um, coming from a Haitian household, I'd, I'd, PD, yeah, PDA is... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I mean, they, they, he's he's tried, um, but I'm just like, sir, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, no. Do you know who my father is right there? And my father is he he's a very strict religious man. No, just we 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 not doing it. Okay, we could do the hugs and stuff. Well, when we get, like kiss, sir. No, my mother she she's more open. But even then, like I don't I don't mind PDA. But like family and stuff, I, mm, no 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 eh, mm, eh, no. Well, kissing, what is that? Sex. What, I, I don't know what sex is. I, I don't. What? 
Wow, they're, they're really getting it in. And and don't even talk about watching any type of movie with my parents that any sex scene comes on the TV because I'm just kind of like, wow, this is what people be doing, right? No, God damn well. I, 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 you know, so like I said, we're not talking about me. We talk about them, you know, and uh, he, he, he not with it. But I understand. I understand uh, Austin. Becca don't understand. Okay, and I don't know what else to say. You know, I, I'm sure Dr. Pia gave some advice. I didn't write down what advice she gave because it's probably not going to help. She done already gave them too many advice and it didn't help. So anything she said is not going to is not going to work. So I think that's probably why I didn't write anything down. So we're going to move on then, you know, because there ain't nothing else to say about them. You know, they probably not going to have sex and they... May not even stay together, but we'll see what the future holds. And, you know, we get on to Chloe. She sets up a little dinner date for her and Michael in their hotel room. So they talk about going back to the shared apartment after their honeymoon. Chloe's emotionally overwhelmed, tears up a little bit, says she doesn't know if she can do this. Michael looked like he's speechless. It goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And Michael said it's okay. She's human. And, you know, he tells her to trust to trust that he trusts her and she can be selfish. Like he's so understanding and whatnot. So Chloe talk, tries to talk to us in a confessional, but gets emotional in the confessional saying that she's never heard those words before about him telling her to be selfish. And he's just so supportive and she's so appreciative. Like, wow, they really found me like the potential love of my life. Chloe, I'm glad if that's the way you really and truly honestly feel. If that's the way you really feel, I'm, I'm glad. Because we, we was thinking you was about to run out. When you sat down and went to commercial, I'm like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Please don't let this girl run out on this guy. I'm not trying to have Michael cry for the second time because a girl don't ran out on him. But, you know, like I said, they always do that for dramatic effect when they when they do stuff like that. So, she going to stick it out. You know, she going to stick beside him. And, you know, they hug. That's where the episode ends. And I'm like, okay. We, we won't have to see how this goes. Are they our only hope for this season? Cause you know, Austin Becca, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see it happening. Unfortunately, I, I did in the beginning, but now it's just like, you know, he ain't trying to, you know, he ain't trying to have sex. You know, I'm not saying that's not that means it's not gonna work, but you know, it doesn't look too promising. So I don't know. Michael and uh, Chloe seem like it may be something there, but at the same time, you know, married at first sight be playing in our faces each and every time. So. Who knows if they really going to, you know, stick it out. But I'm hoping the best. Fingers crossed from them. And that's it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you laughed at least once, please subscribe. If you didn't laugh, that's okay. There's an episode next week. Come back next week. Hopefully, I can make you laugh then so you can subscribe. Comment down, comment down below what you thought about this episode. Be easy, breezy, lemon squeezy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.